you know, so I'm a teacher and I'm thinking, you know, I've got to have a, I, I need a, I need to figure out my, my retirement plan, right? So I thought, couldn't I use my scientific knowledge to invent something that would make me a fortune, right? Now, the only way that you're going to make a lot of money is you've got to invent something that people need, right? Because if you make something that people need, then, you know, everyone's going to buy it, right? So I thought, let's see, toilet paper already invented. I can't, you know, invent a new kind of toilet paper. I don't know. Toothbrushes, everybody's got a toothbrush. You know, everybody's got some kind of a grooming tool for their hair or whatever, brush or comb. You know, so I'm trying to think, you know, what do people need? So then I used my knowledge. When I used to teach environmental science, the needs of living things. And aside from air, that's our first need for human beings, right? <laughs> Within three minutes, any of us could die with a lock if we had a lack of oxygen. But our next need is water. Water. And I don't know if you've heard this, but in the news a lot, they're talking about water could be the next source of, of conflict between countries because global warming and climate change is screwing up the weather patterns. So the places that used to get a lot of water or a lot of uh, precipitation are getting less. Oregon, our snowpack is way down the last several years because of climate change. California's been in a major drought. Other parts of the world are experiencing horrible droughts. So I thought, what if I invented something that could magnify water? You pour a little bit in, and you get a whole bunch of water out. Everybody needs water to survive. There are countries like Israel where they have to actually take the water from the Mediterranean and desalinate it. In other words, you have to get the salt out of it. It costs a lot of money, and it's a very, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very complicated process. So, what I did was, I've invented something. I'm still working some of the bugs out. That you add some water, and you get a whole bunch back. Now, let me demonstrate. Oh, that's the plan. Shark tank, my that's friends. That's the plan. Shark tank. Shark tank. Yeah, shark tank. You're right. You're right. So we got time, cheese, in a jar. Wow. All right. Let me open this puppy up. Again, it's not a very elegant design. I'm still working the bugs out. But okay. Let's get the first spot. So I've got a, gra a graduate <laughs> cylinder here. Sorry, Max. Jessica, how much water is in there approximately? Can you read it? Like a yeah, a little bit more than a thousand milliliters of water, right? Oh, that's a lot. Okay, that's a lot of water. So we're going to pour some in, and let's see what happens here. Now again, I, as I've mentioned, I am working some of the bugs out. I can never predict how much water it's going to take to get the mechanism to uh, kick in. Um, sometimes it's, you know, 500 milliliters of water. If you listen carefully, you might be able to hear some of the sounds. But, you, but I hope you notice that I wheeled it out. There's no connections to power. There's no rubber hoses connecting to other parts of the room, et cetera, et cetera. Like I say, it's really, I can never quite predict how much it's going to take. All right, well, this is not, this is more than usual. Looks like it's not going to kick in yet. All right, let me get a second thousand. But you can imagine, once I get all the kinks worked out, you go someplace where there's not a lot of water. It's dripping. It's starting? It's dripping. What? It's dripping. After a thousand, sweet. Oh, it's only dripping though. What's going on? Yeah, that was. It's not really. No, it's. It'll. It'll come out better than a drip. Oh, you coming out or not? Oh, there we. It's working. Sweet. Okay. Well, let's. I put a thousand in. Right. So. Well, like I said, I'm working. I'm working some of the kinks out still. All right. So, like I said, I'm working some of the kinks out. Maybe that's what works. You can drink it. Don't drink it. He's gonna drink it. He's gonna drink it. Can I try it? Smells okay. Can I try it? Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so I'm gonna say so. <laughs> <laughs> 
palatable. Is it safe to drink? It's pal well, it's got a little kind of aftertaste or whatever. If you uh, want a sample, I don't have, um, I'm out of extra cups. So I have one cup you'd have to be willing to share, and you don't want to do that if you're a person that has any kind of a... Communable diseases. You know, if you have a, a cough, a cold, or anything like that, you shouldn't really share this thing. But let's just make sure that it's, you know... So we started out with 1,000 milliliters. Pretty slow, but you know, it works. It's gonna take less time. Okay, one second. I gotta transfer this. Everyone's asking that. One second. So, first thousand. First thousand. Okay. What's blue? All right. Yeah, you want a sample? You want to test it? I'll totally try it. I want to try it. Really, Jordan? I can give it a try. Nicole, second try. Tastes like water. Drink from a different side. If you drink from, yeah, if you drink from that side, you'll be okay. It's sweet. It's sweet, okay? Have a little aftertaste. Hi, John. Get yours. You'll get yours. He finally wants to know. John wants to know how it's done. Just <laughs> water. I'm not the only girl that's trying this. I'm not the only girl that's trying this. I don't know. We're up, except we're over here first, and then we're coming back. I'll try around. a little bit. All right. What do you think? It tastes like water. Hi Justin, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome back. Did you finish your paragraph? That's like fountain water. Grace, you want to taste? Sure. Wow. You got a bit of a black eye there. What's that from? Uh, you okay? Yeah, some TV's fun. Okay. Last one for now. All right, now. Here's the deal. As I already mentioned, uh, all right, we're up to our second thousand. We start out with one thousand, right? We start out with a thousand. That's what I put in. Wow. Two thousand. Now, here's the deal. We're going to have a competition. Here's how it's going to work. Uh, one of our, our first topic, you know, I told you we're going to be looking at models, uh, or we're going to be looking at uh, some uh, astronomy type things. We're going to be looking at models of Earth in space and how it's changed over time based on evidence. So what is a scientific model? You've all seen scientific models. How many yeah. of you have seen, ever seen a model of an atom? Either a drawing or a fig three-dimensional figure. No one has ever actually seen a real atom. So a scientific model is something that represents something that is not easily seen or observed based on observation, based on scientific reason and principles, and it helps explain something. You know, in this case, you know, it explains all those, like for an atom, it explains all the observations that we've made about atoms. You and your lab group, you are going to come up with a model that explains how this thing works using logic and reason and the observations that we have here. What are some of the observations? You can see the size of the box. You can see we added 1,000 milliliters of, of pure water. You can see the shape of the box and how big it is, and you can see what the output is. We're on our third thousand uh, of, um, of output based on a thousand going in. So you're going to end up sketching out a model of what you think is going on in here. We're going I'll give you the details criteria tomorrow. Uh, you'll have tomorrow to work on this. Up, oh, we're on our, what did I say, third thousand, right? Third. Yep. Third, okay. Third thousand. That's three thousand. And then on Friday, uh, you'll present your model to the class. We'll have a scoring guide to go judge the models. I'll share that with you tomorrow as well. And then the lab group that, you know, the lab groups that get the highest score in terms of their model, again, we'll have fabulous prizes for you and your group, um, as we did with the other activities that we've done in the room, right? So I will answer some questions about the gizmo. So do you have any questions at this point? Yeah, how does it work? Well, that's what you're going to model. <laughs> Other questions about anything? 
Yes, true. What originally was in the water? That's like. What do you mean? What was originally in the well, water? It looks kind of milky. Yeah. Oh, you mean the water that came out of the no. tap? Yeah. Oh, that's only no, because. Means, well, <laughs> no. Well, when you when you get water out of these taps, there's air that mixes that's mixed in it, and the air as the air comes up and set and comes out the top, it makes the water look cloudy, but then it gradually disappears. If you ever notice that. Why does it come out? Oh, this? Oh, well, that's, you know, I told you, I'm still working out some of the bugs. Food coloring. So, well, there, we have, an, there we have an inference, food coloring, or a hypothesis. So, again, that's what you'll come up with your model, and if that's your, if that's your hypothesis, you'll include that in your model. How did the, how the water come out with the blue coloring in it or whatever. All right, we're up to our 4,000. Wait a minute, let's finish 4,000. I'll take a few more questions here. Three. One. All right, 4,000. So three times as many as we started with. All right, other, are there any other questions? Yes. Did you originally have water inside of the machine before you poured some in? I doubt. Uh, no comment. Quite cool. No comment. <laughs> no co oh, no. Ooh, I said he's, no he's hiding something. He's obviously I hiding said, something. No, so you or no comment. You can interpret that any way you wish. He's obviously hiding something. I'm obviously hiding something, according to Riggs. Are there other questions? Yeah. Yes. Do you have complicated tubing? Okay. Everything. The way this. Uh, I will. I will kind of indirectly answer your question, like a good politician. Uh, ooh, you. Everything in here. The total cost would be less than. Uh, $25. Everything could be found at your local Home Depot. So we could pretty much build it ourselves? Ah, if you knew the magical arrangement that is required to make this work. We need five lock picks. Does yeah. anybody know how to make those? Other questions? We may need less. Depends on the complexity of the lock. Other questions? None? Okay. So I don't know if you heard John Cross out, out in the hall earlier. So here's the deal. John. Uh, we will have our competition on Friday. I will not reveal the box. The box will remain locked if you remember to ask me after you graduate. And there have been a few students that have returned. Oh, up to our, what is that, five? That's five. 5,000 oh, okay. milliliters. Still going. 